6.2a one-step equations. Inverse operations are operations that undo each other. Addition and subtraction are inverses. We have 3 plus 5 equals 8. We can do 8 minus 5 equals 3. And multiplication and division are inverses. 4 times 3 is equal to 12, and 12 divided by 3 equals 4. They undo each other. We can solve one-step equations involving whole numbers by using inverse operations. Here we have 3 plus x is equal to 8. Well, by adding a negative 3 to both sides of this equation, we can create a zero pair and isolate x to one side. We have a positive 3 plus a negative 3. That's going to create a zero pair, eliminate it, now we're just left with x is equal to 8 minus 3, which is 5. x is equal to 5. Here we have x minus 4 is equal to 6. By adding 4 to both sides of the equation, we can create a 0 pair. We have a negative 4 plus a positive 4. That makes 0. And we're left with x is equal to 6 plus 4, which is 10. We isolated x to one side. We can use inverse operations to work with equations containing negative numbers. If we have x plus 4 and 1 tenth is equal to a negative 7 and 2 tenths, we can add a negative 4 and 1 tenth to each side of the equation. That's going to create a zero pair here and eliminate it. And if we have a negative 7 and 2 tenths and we add a negative 4 and 1 tenth, well, that's going to be a negative 11 and 3 tenths. x is equal to negative 11 and 3 tenths. We can also look at it as just subtracting 4.1 from each side, 4 and 1 tenth from each side. We take it away from here. We're left with an x. And when we take a negative 4.1 from a negative 7.2, we get a negative 11.3, just like we did here. So remember that adding a negative, like we did here, to both sides of an equation is the same as subtracting from both sides. We isolate x to one side by creating a zero pair. So remember, if we have 5 plus a negative 3, well, that's equal to 2. And 5 minus 3 is equal to 2. If we have 5 minus 3 equals 2, this is just adding the opposite, isn't it? We're adding a negative 3 instead of taking away a positive 3. But typically we think of it as subtracting from both sides. So if we have q plus 5 and 2 tenths is equal to a negative 9 and 7 tenths, by subtracting this negative 5.2 from each side, we create a zero pair right here plus 5.2 minus 5.2, which isolates the variable to one side of the equal sign. Now we just do negative 9.7 and negative 5.2. That's going to give us a negative 14.9. And we can check it by going backwards. We have a negative 14.9. Instead of subtracting it, if we added 5.2, it would equal negative 9.7. So yes, we did it correctly. Here we have a negative 3 fourths plus n is equal to 5. When we have a negative add n, we can add a positive number to both sides of the equal sign to create a zero pair. This will isolate the variable to one side of the equal sign, showing its value. If we have a negative 3 fourths, plus n, we can add a positive 3 fourths to create that zero pair to eliminate it. When we add 3 fourths to the 5, we get 5 and 3 fourths. We know that n is equal to 5 and 3 fourths. We can check it. 5 and 3 fourths plus a negative 3 fourths, the opposite of the positive one, is equal to 5. So yes, we did it correctly. We can use division as an inverse operation to solve for a variable involving multiplication. If we have 8 is equal to negative 5 tenths p, we divide both sides of the equal sign by the coefficient negative 
five tenths. When the numerator and the denominator are the same, the fraction is equal to one. So we're creating one P. Here we have eight divided by negative five tenths. That would be a negative 16. We have a positive eight divided by a negative five tenths. That would equal negative 16. We know that negative 16 is equal to one P. We don't have to write the one, so it's equal to P. And we can check it. We can multiply negative 16 times negative 5 tenths. It equals 8. We have two negatives, so it's going to make a positive. So yes, we did it correctly. And it doesn't matter which side the variable is on. We isolate the variable to whichever side it's on. If we have 3 and 2 tenths n is equal to 9 and 6 tenths, we have the n on the left side, we would just divide both sides by the coefficient 3 and 2 tenths. We get n is equal to 3. If it's on the right side, we still divide both sides by the coefficient 3 and 2 tenths, and we get 3 is equal to n. Doesn't matter which side the variable's on. We isolate it to whichever side it's at. We can use multiplication as an inverse operation to solve for a variable involving division. If we have a negative m over 4 and 5 tenths is equal to 6, we can use multiplication. This is division. What we do is we take this 4 and 5 tenths and we multiply both sides of the equation by the negative 4 and 5 tenths. We can write it over a 1, so it's easier to multiply straight across. So we have 4 and 5 tenths m, and we have a negative 1 times a negative 4 and 5 tenths. That's going to make a positive 4 and 5 tenths. So because we're multiplying a negative times a negative, we end up with positives here. And on this side, we have 6 times negative 4 and 5 tenths, 1 times 1. That means we have a negative 27 over a 1, which is a negative 27. Here, we have the same numerator and denominator, so we made 1m. We don't have to write the 1. So m is equal to negative 27. We multiply both sides by this negative 4 and 5 tenths to isolate m to one side of the equal sign. Here we have 25 hundredths times y is equal to 5. We're multiplying it by some unknown number, and it will equal 5. Now, we could divide both sides by 25 hundredths and isolate y. Then we'll have the same numerator and denominator and have 1y. But we can also solve for the value of y by multiplying both sides of the equation by 4 to make the coefficient of y become a 1. 25 hundredths is 1 fourth. If we multiply this by 4, we're going to make the coefficient a 1 as 1y. We don't have to write that 1, so it's just y on this side. Then we do 5 times 4 on this side, we get a 20. We know y is equal to 20. Or we could divide both sides by 25 hundredths and solve it that way. But if we see that Mental math, we can turn this into a 1 very easily. Then we can just multiply it by that amount. If the coefficient was 0.5, we could multiply it by 2 to make the coefficient a 1. If it was 1 tenth, we could multiply it by 10 to make it a 1. Okay, that's the first part. We're moving on to 6.2b, writing and solving one-step addition and subtraction equations. Just remember, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do it to the other side. We can't just subtract or, you know, add or multiply or divide on one side thinking that we're going to isolate that variable. We have to do it to both sides of the equal sign in order to isolate that variable. Have a great day. I hope it's productive. I hope good things happen to you. And join me for the next lesson. Bye.